Hello everyone, welcome back to Juan Diman. Since the presentation of the 360 degrees time lapses, I spent some time thinking about how could we present the idea in an organized way. I kind of ran out of patience, so here is the first part of a potential two videos about it. In this part, we'll review the design, explain how it works, and show it in action. I'll keep the details about how can you build this at home for a second video. Time lapses are cool, right? But how much cooler can they get? Some YouTubers already make incredible ones. They use professional cameras with way more resolution than mine, and they zoom laterally, and you can see the piece, which looks really cool. I started thinking if there was a possibility to record the print while it was being printed from different angles. The camera will move just a little bit on each layer that gets printed, giving it that 360 time-lapse look. First, I started designing a circular rail that sits on top of the set axis so that on each printed layer, the camera is lifted just as the strutter does. The rail turned out to be way more complicated than I anticipated. Initial design was weak, and I thought that I could hold a stepper motor and a camera clamped to a wagon as soon as the weight was sufficiently centered on the rail. Unfortunately, the camera needs to move freely, which changes the gravitational center of the wagon. Given the freedom that the camera needs, moving closer and more far away from the center of the bed, it was just too hard to keep a static gravity center, so I had to start from scratch. On the second iteration, I made it wide enough that it will hold the weight of the wagon, but the way that I designed the rail with a specific angle of inclination had a negative impact on the stability of the wagon. I tried to modify the design using a non-angle rail, but it didn't work. Let's say that I learned a lot of project management on Fusion 360 with this project. So I started from scratch again. Given my limited mechanical engineering skills, it took me three iterations to get to a solution that I wasn't too ashamed to share with you. This time, I made the rail that has an horizontal slot to put the wagon in, and it's very robust, but at the same time, lightweight. Then I focused on the wagon. I already had a prototype that served the purpose of designing the rail, but there was a lot more that could be done in that sense. Before going into detail, what a better way of not missing the next video than subscribing to the channel. I wanted you guys to use any camera or webcam that you have at home, so I designed a multi-piece adapter for the wagon that will allow you to use virtually anything that you want simply by modifying the adapter. Don't worry, I'll post all the STL files so you can modify them. There was another problem to solve. The extruder needs to move freely over his, its axis. The camera should never get in the way while it is printing. Whenever we take a snapshot, the wagon, including the camera, needs to return back to a position in which it doesn't disturb the ongoing printing. For the wagon to return to a safe place, first it needs to know where a safe place is, right? Obvious. Well, it wasn't that obvious for me when I designed it initially. 3D printers use the concept of home, which sets the zero positions for the axis X, Y, and Z. Some use switches, others use more advanced technology like sensors to measure them. The camera wagon required a similar system to home itself. I designed a little dent on the rail and added a switch to the wagon. When the wagon passes over the rail, the switch turns on and it lets the system know that it has reached a position in which it's safe to keep the camera. The dent can be installed anywhere, so depending on the camera that you're using, it will sit closer or more farther away of the holder of the rail. It is important to keep it as close as possible to the extruder to increase the stability of the print. A stepper motor sits on top of the wagon and it moves across the rail. It's a bit heavy, but it works like a charm. If you feel adventurous, I will encourage you to try a more lightweight version of it and let me know if it gets better. Also, I found that the weight of the motor interferes with the leveling of the bed. Printers that have double axis threads will have a better experience, but using unified bed leveling and a four point bed tilting is enough to compensate it. I will add some links to the description. Once I had a structure complete, I started playing with the software. Uh, but before I show you the juiciest part of this design, here are our sponsors. Ah, keep dreaming one. Oh, me, me, me. Whatever. The code required to make everything work is based on Optolabs, an Optoprint plugin. If you want to know a little bit more about it, feel free to check this amazing video from Teaching Tech. I'll also add a link to the description. The plugin allows users to take time lapses of their printings. It has a custom mode for DSLR cameras in which the users can configure how the snapshots are taken and add extractions if you require them. This was the spark that gave me the idea of creating scripts to move the rail to the desired angle before the snapshot is taken, and then return it home once the snapshot has been finished. I prepared a few scripts, 
One of them is for executing before the printed start, which makes sure that the camera is located in the home position. Another one calculates the position that the camera has to move to based on the snapshot number and it moves the camera into it. Then the third one returns the camera to a safe place away from the strutter. I tried to make it a little bit smart. After the half part of the 360 degrees have been completed, instead of counting the step positively counterclockwise, it counts them negatively clockwise in order to save some unneeded steps and improve the overall printing time. I'll post this on GitHub for you folks. This was all for now. I'll prepare another video where I go through all the details of the electronic circuit and the components that I used. I'll post all the extra materials required to build it as well as the instructions so that you can also build it at home. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer them. And now let me show you why we came here in the first place. Here are some of the time lapses that I recorded. <laughs>